بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلی آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بع in our dars or our study of the book of Umda Tahkam Kitab Tahara the chapter of purification we reach the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam which talks about the manners pertinent to using the restroom that what kind of Islamic manner should we observe when we want to relieve ourselves and in this chapter it contains benefits and the adab or the adab or the manners for entering the restroom the manners that we should observe when we're sitting in the restroom and the manners that we should observe when leaving the mess, re, the restroom and this is all from the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it shows us the completeness of islam that islam is a complete religion and it doesn't leave anything out as far as observing the manners pertinent to every aspect of our lives عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا دخل خلا قال اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الخبث والخبائث رواه بخاري ومسلم وخبث جمع خبيث وخبائث جمع خبيثة استعاذة من ذكران الشياطين وإناثها وإناثهم. In this hadith that was narrated on Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said if one of you or or that this hadith uh, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he used to enter the restroom he used to say before entering O Allah verily I seek refuge in you from the khubthi wa khaba'ith meaning the male and the female shayateen the devils because that shows us that one of the places that the shayateen and the jinn and habit are places that are filthy places like the restrooms, the places where we uh, relieve ourselves and the places of filth and this is in relation to the manners we should observe while entering the restroom some of the benefits we gain from this is it shows us the that it is mustahab or that it is recommended that we say this dua before we enter the restroom and that is as a form of protection from the devils who strive to uh, wreck a person's prayer Another benefit that we get from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that one of the ways in which the shayateen causes harm to people or one of the reasons which allows them to cause harm to people has to do with filth so by inhabiting and being in filthy places and having filth around you this 
is an invitation to the shayateen and the jinn. And that they they strive with their utmost to disturb a person's prayer because the prayer is the way that we are it is our relationship with our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is through our prayer and the shayateen one way in which we can protect ourselves from the shayateen is by protecting ourselves from najasa and filth and being in filthy places and saying this supplication before entering the restroom another benefit of this hadith the Shaykh Allama Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala that he mentioned is that it is an obligation to be away from najasat you know from filth to be away from filth and filthy places and to take the necessary precautions to protect oneself and protect one's prayer and to free oneself from spilling or having najasa uh, come to uh, get on one's clothing so that we should strive when we are utmost when we use the restroom to protect ourselves from najasa from urine and from defecation and other filth that may be uh, that we may encounter when we're in the restroom those are just some of the benefits and as we'll come upon the next hadith or one of the hadith that we'll, we'll talk about in the future which illustrates for us that uh, najasa or not properly making a stinja, you know, cleaning ourselves when we go to the restroom is one of the reasons a person receives punishment in the grave and so we want to be cautious of that and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and, and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam